When it comes to web scraping with Python these days, we kind of have three main options of tools that we can use to get the job done for us. Picking the right one will depend on what you're trying to achieve, the website you're scraping, and what you want to do with the data. So the first option we have is Beautiful Soup. Now this is a powerful Python library which is specifically designed for parsing HTML. We can give it a page of HTML and we can use its functions to find the data that we're after on the page and extract it. It's very easy to use and it has really good documentation and this is why I always recommend it to beginners. However, it's worth noting that it is not a complete web scraping tool, although some people might refer to it as such. It only does the parse part of our web scraper. For me, a successful web scraper has three main functions. It has the first one to get the data, the second one to parse the data, and a third one to output the data. So this is only gonna fulfill the second part, which is parsing the information. However, it is extremely powerful and it has lots of features in it that a lot of people might not use or don't know about. My last video was on that subject actually, so if you're interested in that, go and check that out. It is really good for structured HTML and scraping, and it is powerful and lightweight. For me, it's best for beginners and people who are learning web scraping and, and or Python, smaller projects where you only need to get out a certain amount of data or you don't need complete control over everything, and simpler web scrapers. Our second option is to use Scrapey. Now Scrapey is a full featured web scraping framework for Python. It can do everything. It has really good ways to control the data flow. You can create specific items. You use spiders to crawl the data out and you can use the item pipeline to send it to where you want to, be it a database, a CSV file or a JSON object. It's also very customizable and powerful and you can have add-ons as well to make it even more useful like incorporating it with Splash to be able to scrape JavaScript websites. It's quite complex though and the downside for me is how hard it can be to learn and how daunting it might be for a new user. The documentation is all there and complete, but it's not necessarily beginner friendly and getting your first scrapey project off the ground can be quite challenging if you're not used to it. I've got a video on that too, where I take go from nothing to a complete basic HTML scraper in scrapey on my channel, which you might find interesting. So for me, this is definitely best for advanced users, full and complete web scrapers that require a lot more control and also repeat scrapers like you might want to run it at a certain interval every day and compare the data and get it through. It's worth noting that Scrapey is a complete package. You only need that, it controls everything for you. Our third option is to use Selenium. Now a lot of people will refer to Selenium as an actual web scraper, but it's not. It's a purpose-built browser automation tool for testing. It's designed for testing websites. You can control it with your Python scripts and get it to perform actions and control your browser for you. Now within this, a kind of byproduct is being able to web scrape because we can interact with elements and get their data out. Although it's not ideal because it's quite slow and resource heavy and not that easy to debug if, it's not, if something isn't quite working for you. However, some cases you do just need to use it. I don't often tend to recommend Selenium because often I think there's a better option available. However, sometimes you just do need to load a browser up. It's worth noting that even though you're, you're running an actual browser instance, that you can still be blocked and websites can still detect that you're a bot. Selenium sends that information over and although you can remove it, it's a little bit more difficult and not quite as straightforward. So this is only really best for last case resorts or when you need to click on some data or input something into a field. If you need to type something in or click on a button and then get that specific piece of data out, this could be what you're after. So those are the main three, but there are other options, although they follow along a similar kind of line. So request HTML uses the Python version of the Puppeteer browser called Puppeteer which is a slim down, lightweight Chrome browser that will actually load the page up for you when you run the render command, and it will send you the HTML data back. You can also pass it with request HTML, or you can give that to Beautiful Soup to extract whichever piece of information that you're after. Again, because we are running an actual browser, albeit a slightly lighter one in the background, we still have to wait for the page that way. So it is a bit slower and a bit more resource heavy. Although I do use this library quite a lot for my own web scrapers because I do find it quite powerful. Another option for rendering JavaScript pages is to use Splash. Now Splash is created by the same people that created Scrapey, Scraping Hub, 
and it is basically a fully designed web scraping browser. You use its API to send it the website URL that you're trying to scrape. It does the rendering for you and then sends you the HTML back. It is useful and I do use it. It does require Docker to run, but it can be run on servers as well. So it's more definitely a more of an advanced tool, although actually getting it to work for just your simple scrapers is really easy. If you're just doing some basic HTML table scraping, I would recommend checking out Pandas. It has a data frame read HTML function and you can give it a URL and it will look through all that and it will pull out just the table data for you. This works really well on websites like Wikipedia that just have their data in tables and you just need to extract it all. You can't really do much more of it than that, but if it's just table data you're after, this could be a good option for you too. The last option I'm gonna talk about is not so much a scraping tool, but it's more of a method. So we can use requests to simulate any request to the server that the browser does. Now quite often, especially with modern JavaScript websites, when you do something on the page, it requests that information from the server and it's sent over via the API. Quite often we can actually get to the API endpoint of that and we can simulate that request ourselves and by by bypassing the whole JavaScript part of the website, we don't have to render it, we don't have to wait for it to appear, we can just request it ourselves from the server and get a nice load of JSON data back. It's worth noting that that works really well in some cases, not so great in others, but it's always worth looking for in my opinion. So that's it for this one. I hope you've enjoyed it and it's brought some value to you. Leave me a comment down below and like this video if you do. Also consider subscribing. I've got loads of web scraping content on my channel already and more to come, along with more videos like this. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.